The question that we're discussing today is the resilience of print media in Asia. Uh, my primary qualification really is to talk about the Indian media, so that's, you will forgive me if I broadly stick to that. The broad scenario was already presented to you by uh, Dr. Rao as chairperson. Uh, the numbers tell us that circul newspaper circulation, print circulation continues to rise and rise pretty fast, uh, especially in what we call language media. You, this is reflected in increasing number of new newspapers, new editions of existing newspapers, uh, more supplements and pages, and uh, generally buoyant bottom line as far as uh, the regional language uh, print is concerned. English newspapers, to my mind, now we don't have very clear data because uh, starting from last year, the one benchmark, which was the Indian Readership Survey, has entered into uh, a kind of dispute from which I fear it will not recover. Uh, so we will not have universally agreed upon set of figures to tell us exactly what's happening in English. But if you look at the last three or four years, it's clear that while there is a general increase, there is a, also a plateauing effect when it comes to, the, to print, print circulation. The kind of growth that uh, the Times of India or the Hindu or Hindustan Times accomplished uh, in the last decade where, you know, where perhaps, I mean, the Times of India over a 20-year period would have gone from selling hardly 200 or 250,000 copies nationwide to over 2 million, uh, and the Hindu to about 1.2, 1.3 million. Uh, it seems to me that the era of that kind of rapid growth, when it comes to English print, uh, is perhaps uh, at an end. Uh, I think numbers will continue to grow because of demography, because of um, greater proficiency in English, but the rate uh, of increase is going to be much slower. And we need to explain at some point why there's a difference between what's happening in uh, English and what's happening in regional languages. And I think here the factors that um, we saw our chairperson present, uh, I think they eloquently testify to the resilience of print in uh, language media. But uh, I think the English, consumer of English language print uh, has different set of horizons, different set of motivating factors, and uh, a, a wider set of options in many ways. And that may account for the plateauing of, of English. I want to spend the next 10, 12 minutes identifying what I think are the strong points of uh, print as, as, as an industry compared to television or uh, the internet, which are the two primary forms of challenge that print media faces. Uh, discuss why, why print may be resilient and also what its uh, weak points are. And while preparing for this presentation, I came across, actually, I heard a different version of it. Uh, There's a gentleman called Ravi Dhariwal, who's the CEO. I forget what designation he has, actually, but he's fairly top CEO of, of Bennett Coleman. And uh, when I was at the Times of India, uh, was fairly low down in the editorial food chain, but uh, we used to interact with him. And you know, he um, is you know, fairly representative of that company's, of the company owner's thinking. And as the largest media, House, it's worthwhile uh, paying attention to his analysis. Now, uh, he and I were at a session about two years ago, Fiki, Fiki Frames Conference, uh, and he, he said something which I didn't take notes from, but uh, in re researching for this, I was looking for some newspaper report, and I came across a similar presentation he made last year uh, at the INMA conference. And he was very bullish on print, and he, broadly speaking, identified five, five factors. And it's useful to just run through them. Uh, the first factor he said was that um, you have uh, a favorable business environment. So incomes are rising, literacy is rising, so this is good. Secondly, he says 
it's a, you get excellent value for money. So if you look at uh, the price of a newspaper, it's virtually nothing. Uh, if you recycle the newsprint, it's virtually free or perhaps a rupee or rupee 50. There's no other product of comparable value which costs so less. Third, he said that the newspaper industry over the years had managed to inculcate a newspaper reading habit, uh, which will not uh, vanish that easily. Fourth, uh, the newspaper business is highly competitive and hence innovative. And fifth, he says, we have employees. He didn't say journalists. He says we have employees uh, who are also highly innovative. Now, what's interesting in this list of five is that nowhere does Mr. Dhariwal mention journalism. Uh, nowhere does he mention editorial content. And uh, in a sense, of these five, actually, uh, you can really boil uh, his, his uh, analysis down to one factor, which is that it's very low price. So the value proposition is literally unbeatable. Uh, and it's my sense that this is one crucial Achilles heel for print, because if you want to ask yourself from a businessman's point of view, and let's be very clear that it's the businessman who are calling the shots here. Uh, you, if you, so the question about resilience of print media translates into a question about the resilience of the business model that underlines print media. And we need to understand what this business model is. One element is the element that Dhariwal mentions, which is that a low cover price. Uh, uh, delegates to this conference who have come from abroad would be struck by uh, how cheap the ab daily newspaper is. Nowhere in the world do you have newspapers that sell for hardly nothing, hardly any, at, at, for such a low price, a few cents uh, every day. So that's a crucial element of the business model. The second element which follows from the first is that you have, you're, you're utterly and completely dependent on ad revenues to the extent of 90, 90 to 95% of your total revenues. Because your cover price is very low and once you pay margin to the hawker, you get virtually nothing. So 90 to 95% revenue dependence on advertising. Uh, a footnote or one, ele one further element of this uh, aspect is uh, a drive to uh, generate revenue even from news columns. So if you're heavily dependent on advertising, uh, yes, so, so you will sell, you will maximize advertising space and maximize the yield. But when that is not enough, then there is pressure to maximize yield or to generate yield even from non-advertising space. Uh, and again, those of you who are not from India, uh, now is as good a time as any to mention the term paid news, which is a uniquely Indian contribution to uh, the business of media. Where uh, And this is fairly well documented. Politicians have been arraigned uh, for not declaring money spent uh, on favorable news coverage in their election returns. Uh, paid news is rampant in the advertising, so-called advertising news, sorry, so-called entertainment news section of newspapers. Uh, and this is a, has emerged as a small but vital element of the business model. Uh, the third, the, the, the next element is Spend as little as you can on news gathering. So uh, there is enormous pressure. Virtually no Indian newspaper um, bothers with having foreign bureaus. The Hindu was one exception. When I was editor, we managed to push up the score to 13, 13 foreign reporters. But over the last year since I've left, numbers have again fallen down to four or five. Uh, but even that is at least twice more than any other newspaper has. Uh, and the smaller newspapers, the regional language newspapers whose growth we've celebrated uh, would like to get away with spending as little as possible on news gathering, even uh, from their regional, even in regions where they have high circulation. So, uh, and then a fourth element of the uh, business model is, is to have collateral businesses. Now, what do I mean by this? Uh, that you are a media company, but bringing out a newspaper is only one of many business ventures. So if you're the Bhaskar group with a very profitable, high circulating uh, Hindi daily, uh, that's not enough. You also want to get into power generation. You want to get into all, uh, other allied fields. Uh, if you are Jindal Steel, you want to get into media. If you're Ambani, you're, you're buying into media, taking over media. If you're Times of India, 
uh, highly profitable um, print media and, and, and now television company, although I'm not sure Times now makes money, but certainly print makes money. Uh, you uh, leverage your power to acquire shares in a whole range of companies through an arrangement known as private treaties. So we see that this is also emerging as an important element of the business model that you uh, develop business interests outside of the media. And uh, by and large, the pattern that we're settling into across, and you can see this in virtually every, if you segment the Indian print market into territories, Typically, you have one or two market leaders who corner 80 to 90 percent of the advertising revenue and are profitable in that particular territory. Uh, and then you have others who pretty much break even, but who cross subsidize uh, through collateral businesses or sharp practices of one kind or the other, or uh, um, by being leader in some other territory. So, Times of India, for example, loses money in Chennai and uh, Hyderabad, but would make money in Bombay and Delhi and cross-subsidize. Hindu makes money in Hyderabad and uh, Kerala and Chennai, loses money in uh, Bangalore and Delhi, cross-subsidize. So, so this is an important element which allows print to, be, uh, to, to, to stay afloat. Now, uh, if we are correct in assuming that the future of print depends to a large extent on the future viability of this business model, what are the areas, uh, why might this business model come under threat? And it seems to me that television is one, one source of threat and the internet is another. And uh, print has come under sustained um, assault as far as the share of the advertising revenue is concerned, although still a lion's share of certain kinds of advertising uh, appears in print, but if you look at uh, a crucial component of print advertising revenue in the past, classified ads, matrimonials, motor cars, rentals, uh, a lot of this has now migrated to the internet and uh, does not generate the kind of profit that um, earlier newspapers used to depend on. Motor cars, still an important advertiser for, uh, for print but increasingly also uh, uh, on, on television for obvious reasons. Uh, so there is a sense in which uh, advertising revenues are under pressure and this is, I think, that coupled with a slowdown in the economy has led to enormous pressure on, uh, on print today. But nevertheless, print continues to keep its head above the water and in my view will continue to do so because the business model for its competitors is even more questionable. So the business model of television and the business model of internet, internet news, uh, either don't exist or are uh, built on, at least in the case of television, built on very, very shaky ground. There is virtually no, uh, this is a conversation I had with somebody in Prasar Bharti who'd done a study for the government. I think apart from headlines today and Arch Thak, as this is as per last year, maybe CMS may have better data on this, but virtually no uh, private news television channel in Hindi or English makes money. And uh, uh, so, so, you know, th th there's a sense in which the, the viability of that business model also gets under question. And it's quite clear to see how then um, news television can get suborned by industrial groups or business groups who then lend money or acquire them uh, for reasons other than uh, wanting to purvey news. Online, there is no viable revenue model. And I think as we look to the future, this is the one uh, uh, Alongside, in India at least, the fact that internet penetration is still low, uh, data speeds are still slow. Uh, this is one reason why uh, print has managed to postpone its uh, day of reckoning uh, for much more than in any other uh, developed media market. The fact is that even uh, so-called broadband speeds at home uh, are um, inadequate for uh, the kind of reading experience that you would need if you were to really chuck newspapers as a, as a reading habit. Uh, but that may happen increasingly, I say it in, in the households of many journalists like myself, uh, where despite the frustrations of, uh, slow, uh, of low bandwidth, etc., a lot of the reading that we do uh, takes place uh, on computer or on tablet. Uh, however, the reason why, to my mind, print will remain resilient 
in the short, medium, perhaps even long term. When I say print, I want to pick up something from our uh, Chinese colleague that we are really in the, in the era of media convergence here. And rather than, being, rather than asking about print, rather than fetishizing a form of presentation, which is ink on paper, the question that we are really asking is about the viability or the resilience of old media companies. So what does Times of India or the Hindu have to do to remain resilient? Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be wedded to paper and ink. Question is, are they able to master the kind of convergence that we see happening elsewhere so that as and when new forms become more popular and become more dominant, they would be market leaders in those forms as well. And here I think it's clear that old media and print media has an inbuilt advantage because none of the internet uh, options that you have today can match the range of uh, news with all the limitations that I said, the fact that newspapers don't want to spend a news gathering, but even so, they have a much larger network uh, of information uh, than any internet or any website can hope to do. Of course, many websites piggyback on PTI, and during the day, most television channels piggyback on PTI, which, uh, which pre presents the kind of feed. But even then, the average big newspaper has a far better uh, uh, output of news than a wire service like PTI can provide for, an Indian, for, for the Indian reader. So I think uh, print, by, by which I, I mean old media companies, uh, uh, particularly those who, who are in the, in the newspaper business, will be resilient and will thrive if they're able to re-emerge and repackage themselves uh, as uh, you know, internet products as well. When I was editor of The Hindu, I very consciously saw myself not only as the editor of a newspaper, but also as the editor of a website. And what we did uh, 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 during the day, I would spend uh, perhaps not as much time as on print, uh, but certainly a good number of hours would be devoted to uh, addressing and trying to figure out what we want to do with the website. And uh, the same is true of other papers. Uh, and you know, the kind of potential that these newspaper websites have is a different matter that not everybody has managed to realize that, uh, nor have they managed to tap into uh, technology in such a way that, see, technology has eroded the dividing line between internet and television, print and television. Nothing prevents a newspaper which is prepared to spend some money, uh, nothing prevents them from putting on, on their websites the kind of programs that you see on prime time. Like if you tune into prime time television today from 7 to 10 at night, you don't see reporters in the field. You see very little news. All you get are a bunch of talking heads. You have an angry anchor and eight or nine angry people uh, fighting with each other. How difficult is it to replicate a saner, more uh, 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 informative version of that using fairly limited resources, putting it up on YouTube, host, I mean, hosting it on YouTube, giving a link from your site. So the possibilities are enormous uh, once you go down the convergence route. But the crucial element, and this is where I want to flag, uh, uh, and this is where it will be clear why I wanted to, why I set up Ravi Dhariwal as an Aunt Sally, that you know, content is king. This is the old adage. But it's never been true, truer than if we want to talk about the, the future resilience of print. What is it about old media that allows it to, that, that will allow it to hold its head uh, higher than everybody else. Uh, it's, it's the fact that you have it, uh, the possibility of responsible editorial gatekeeping. So helping readers to navigate through information glut, where uh, the extent of disinformation, misinformation, highly opinionated news and views uh, is such that every day I get emails, I'm sure all of you do, of uh, you know, fictitious news items and rumors which people innocently circulate before somebody corrects them and says, look, this is rubbish. Uh, don't pass this kind of thing on. And uh, which originates from some website somewhere. Uh, so the fact that newspapers have an infrastructure to put in place responsible editorial gatekeeping is one advantage that they have. And the second, their ability to invest in news gathering, their ability to invest in uh, analysis and opinion uh, and commentary. And to do so uh, earlier or sooner than what they, so, so in other words, readers don't want to wait 24 hours 
uh, before they read. And I mean, an event happens in the morning. A reader doesn't want to wait till tomorrow morning to find out, uh, to get a sense of perspective. So using a website creatively, deploying editorial resources creatively, to interact with readers uh, on an ongoing basis during the day. But respecting the uh, kind of quality that uh, readers come to expect from print in terms of the editorial gatekeeping, uh, this is the one uh, crucial way in which uh, print will continue to hold its uh, ground uh, despite its business model uh, coming under uh, threat. Uh, from uh, advertising and uh, uh, essentially advertising migrating to the internet or television. Thank you.